Hi, this is Nate from Harvia Sauna and Spa. Today we're talking with Eric Lee, researcher at the University of Uvascula, who specializes in cardiovascular health and sauna use. In this interview, we touch on topics such as cardiovascular health, exercise, the benefits of sauna, the connection between all three, as it's supported by his most recent research. Eric, welcome to Harvia. Thank you very much. We've got some time here for an interview with you, and we've heard all about some of the research that you've done with sauna. Yep. Some of the research you've collaborated with Uvascular University here. Yes. Um, why don't you start from the beginning and tell us a little bit how you started getting interested in saunas right. and the research that you do with the cardiovascular system. Okay. So I'll answer the first question. How I got started with the sauna, well, there's two parts to it. Um, the first part is when I was a competitive athlete, I used to use the sauna a lot, mostly for uh, making weight, so trying to get some water weight off my body. Okay. Subsequently, I moved into uh, more serious training. I was still a competitive athlete, but my training had a it was a bit too strenuous, so it had a very disturbing effect on my muscles. I had these very severe cramps, um, especially on my on my legs, so my quads and my hamstrings. And uh, I would have a cramp on my vastus medialis, which is the muscle closest to the knee, if I extended my leg. So I couldn't extend my leg, so I had to flex my knee. And when I flexed my knee, my hamstrings would cramp, and I had to walk like that. Because if I bend my knee too much, then my hamstring's gonna cramp. If I straighten my knee too much, my quads are gonna cramp. That happens whenever I, I, whenever I had a strenuous workout. Okay. So one of the suggestions that my coworkers at the time suggested to me was to use the sauna after training. He said, he claimed that it would help. I said, okay, let's, let's give it a shot. And it did, it did. Um, for at least 30 minutes after the, after the sauna, it was not cramping up. How I got into cardiovascular physiology and the sauna was a, a bit of a serendipity. Okay. So I wasn't sure what kind of sauna research was being done when I wanted to do it, but I was told that uh, my present supervisor, uh, Dr. Yari Laukanen, he was working towards publishing research about the sauna at the time when I met him. So he roped me in, okay. not knowing that I was already interested in the topic. And of course, the discussion was short. And when he gave me the suggestion, would you like to do research regarding the sauna since you're interested in uh, cardiovascular physiology, which is primarily uh, my passion and my area of interest, I jumped on it and I said, yes, sure, of course. So short discussion. <laughs> A yeah. couple of papers later, you know, we, we, we've achieved uh, quite a, a lot of, uh, we've acquired a lot of uh, additional knowledge that we pulled together to help, in, in my opinion, try to advance the field of uh, sauna and cardiovascular physiology studies. How does the sauna perhaps like make an impact for the average person with an average non-athlete type cardiovascular system? A lot of the research on, on the effects of the sauna isn't conducted on um, the average population, okay. which, is, which is the problem we are facing in the field. So they've seen positive effects, right? But then we have seen positive effects of these, uh, of heat therapy using the sauna on the extreme ends of the population. Mm. So when we talk about very sick people, the clinical population, those with chronic heart failure, the rest of the research that has been done that I mentioned earlier, they were done on athletic population, right? So then that is on the other end of the spectrums. And so the research that I've just uh, published recently is one step toward understanding um, what we're going to do with using the sauna and how we can best try to exploit, I would use the word exploit, the different variables that we can, we can modify in sauna usage to give the average person the best benefit. Mm -hmm. So coming back to that first question for the average person, now it's 
it, it's important to understand that the body adapts to stress, any kind of stress, um, as long as it's exerted on the physiological system. So for the average person, I usually would suggest that if they're just starting out using the sauna, they could maybe use it for once a week, for the first one to three weeks, and then after that, increase it to twice a week, and then subsequently increase it to three times a week. The number of bouts is up to the individual. Some people do four, some people do six, you know. Um, I usually do about three. <laughs> Yes. It's about two or three, really, is right. where I get comfortable. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that's like three or four has been, has been touted to be something that's comfortable for the average person. Yeah. Now, bearing that in mind, if you do that and you stick to doing that, then you have less things to sort of like monitor. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So then you could go, okay, I'll go once a week, uh, uh, three bouts, you know. Every time I'm there, I'll just do three bouts. Okay, mm -hmm. now I'm going to go twice a week. Okay, mm -hmm. but I'm still doing three bouts. And that way you can increase the amount of stress. That's one way. Right. The next way would be to keep the same number of times you visit sauna, so once a week. Right. But then over time, say over the course of, again, two to three weeks later, increase the number of bouts you go to. So right. instead of three, you go four. Right. And then you go five. Then you go six, you know, mm -hmm. and then... Because that creates sort of like an additional level of heat stress for right. the for the system to adapt to. Right, right. Yeah. Could you give us a summary or like a too long didn't read uh, <laughs> version of the results of your study? Could you give us a summary? Sure. Or... So compared to exercise, exercise plus sauna regularly, both mm -hmm. of them regular exercise plus regular sauna confers more benefits. Mm -hmm. And these benefits are seen via the increase or there's more increase in VO2 max compared to just exercise. Exercise also increases VO2 max, but not to the extent that exercise plus sauna gives. It, it decreases blood pressure, particularly systolic blood pressure. Mm. Uh, in the study, we didn't find that um, exercise reduced any of the blood pressures that we measured but exercise plus sauna, there was a reduction in okay. systolic blood pressure. And also we could say the same for total cholesterol levels. It was also reduced, whereas with exercise, we didn't see that reduction. Okay. And again, these participants that you had were average, relatively sedentary. Sedentary. Uh, it's, it's very important to highlight that they were not only sedentary, but they also did not go to the sauna often. These are people who do not use the sauna frequently. Okay. Um, I make that I make that point uh, right. particularly because there's been a lot of criticism for the studies that we've conducted earlier. That the reviewers have said that oh, um, wh how do we know these results are going to be found can be found in the reg regular population because the research that you've conducted on are on the Finnish population Finnish, yeah. who goes to the sauna frequently. So maybe these results are only seen because they go to the sauna regularly, their I body see. has adapted. So we, we, we sort of made sure that in this study that the, the participants in this most recent study, they are sauna naive. So to okay. say. yeah, just based on un my understanding of science, there is a ceiling, i.e. There, there is a point of diminishing returns. You'll yeah. get to a point where doing more sauna will not necessarily give you additional benefit, but there's also a floor. Mm. There is a minimum. For instance, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this. It's all speculation. We'll have to do some research to find out. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure that the floor is probably twice a week. Okay. Going to the sauna twice a week. Now, you can quote me, but I have no research to back me up. <laughs> we do have some research that has shown that going to the sauna twice a week is effective for other things, such as chronic tension headache and okay. also for re reduction of incidence of colds. Right. But that's not where my postulation comes from. Because I, I'm, if we were to look at exercise as something that's comparable to the sauna or actually the other way around if we were to look at sauna that's comparable to exercise mm -hmm. then what's recommended is 
to exercise two to three times a week, right? The bare minimum right. to exercise. If you exercise twice, then you probably have to up the intensity of your exercise. Mm -hmm. If you exercise three times, then you probably keep it at a moderate level. Therefore, in that same way, you'd subject your body to that amount of heat stress as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's how I kind of established that relationship. I follow yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. That's how I think about it. But you're the expert, so sure. <laughs> you can make those kind of postulations, Oops. right? <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Hey. Thank you very much. Yeah.